Hello, happy Thursday everybody. I'm Diana Kennedy, your host for this week's edition of the iHomeschool Network's iHomeschool Hangouts. You'll find me and my friends, the bloggers of the iHomeschool Network here every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, noon Mountain Time, and 11 a.m. on the Pacific Coast. You'll find us here talking about homeschool topics as well as topics that are relative to helping you run your family. Today I am thrilled to be introducing a featured guest um, from Dual Credit. We're going to be talking about how you and your homeschooler can earn college credit at home while your homeschooler is actually doing high school. So I um, know we've got a lot of interest in this topic and even though my children are small, I'm, I'm interested in learning what these girls had to tell me. All right, Adrian Bolton is going to start us off with introductions. Adrian, if you can tell everybody where to find you. Hi everyone, my name's Adrian. I write, uh, excuse me, I blog at themommymess.com. I've got two boys. Um, we're in, closing in on our fifth year of homeschooling. Um, my ninth grader, he's 15, and he's the one that has recently um, completed a portion of the program from dual credit, and he was able to earn his very first college credit. Yay! Um, good for Skyler. So I'm I'm a proud mommy this week. Excellent. These are the stories that you're going to be able to hear today, and we're going to hear from these ladies about how they've done this program and how successful it's been for them. Becky, tell us a little bit more about yourself, please. Okay, I'm from the Houston area, and we've graduated five kids. Three of those five earned their degrees, accredited degrees, primarily by exam, then went on to law school or graduate school. We have five to go. And we share how we did it in um, some study plans at dualcreditathome.com. Excellent. And throughout this hour today, you're going to be learning a little bit more about this program. Heidi, back to join us again today. I'm glad. Tell us about yourself. Hi, everybody. I'm Heidi. You can find me blogging on my own blog. It starts at 8.com. Um, I'm also a member of the Hip Homeschool Moms team where you can find me contributing on a monthly basis and also managing social media um, once a week. Uh, I have a freshman in high school. She is my oldest currently who um, is working her way through the dual credit at home program. And um, what we've loved about it is that we can make it take longer than it was supposed to. Um, you know, we're super busy with a competitive uh, sports schedule here and um, what we really enjoyed is that even though it's set out for a certain number of days, we've been easily able to adapt that and stretch it out as we needed to and uh, she will be taking her exam in three weeks. Excellent. Looking forward to hearing more about that. My friend Kendra Fletcher is here joining us today. Kendra? Hi, I'm Kendra Fletcher, and I blog and podcast at homeschoolingirl.com. Uh, we have eight children, two of whom are adults now, and the oldest will be getting his degree finished up here um, this fall. He took his first CLEP at 15 and um, has done mostly dual credit until he became, until he graduated high school, and then everything's been testing, um, transferring units into the school that he's going to be graduating from. He did it for under $10,000 and um, no debt. So he gets to go accrue a lot of debt as a master's student. <laughs> and then uh, our 18-year-old uh, has done some dual credit and our, our junior is going to be taking another CLEP this summer. Excellent. I'm looking forward to hearing more about this. And that's also going to be a good point that we're going to be bringing up is that this can um, save families lots of money and time and some stress too. Marlene Griffith is my production manager and right-hand girl. Marlene. Hey guys, happy to be here again with you this week. I blog at adiligentheart.com um, and I will be bringing in your comments from the event room so if you have any questions or just need some tips from these awesome ladies, just leave them in the event room and I'll bring them in for you guys. Excellent. Sade Tagbo was coming to us from St. Louis today. Sade? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Sade Tagbo. I blog at SadeTagbo.com. And uh, we were introduced to the Dual Credit at Home program through the ladies at the iHomeschool Network, and we decided to give it a go. Uh, my 12-year-old 
uh, went through the first part of the program and took her first CLEP test last Friday. So we'll be talking more about that uh, during the show, but we're really pleased with the results. Excellent. I'm glad that you mentioned the age because my, my eyes about popped out of my head. Um, so that's that's going to be that kind of where we start, actually, is what, what age is this is going to be appropriate for. Um, I'm Diana Kennedy. And when I am not working with the iHomeschool Network, you can find me at thekennedyadventures.com, where I write about life with a big family and the mother of six, living my Catholic faith, and our misadventures in homeschooling. So today we're going to talk about, like I said, we have we were uh, Featured here, we're featuring today um, Becky from Dual Credit at Home, and what we're going to kind of kick off is um, the thought. It's a, it's a kind of a new mindset that actually high school students can accelerate college. That college level may not really be as difficult as what we as parents think. It's it's not really that much more difficult. It's on a higher, basically a higher high school level, so it can be done at home. So you can take a look at doing some core topics, core subjects like English, history, that sort of thing that you're going to be taking with any sort of degree major or program that you're looking at. So you can do that at home. So make your time work best for you. Um, I'd like to kick it off by asking the girls, um, with Becky's input, um, kind of where we, where you start this age-wise and maturity level-wise. Um, I'm actually going to start with Sade, if you don't mind, because I know I heard you mention, you know, your youngest, I'm sorry, your daughter in the program was, was 12, so I kind of want to start there and then talk to the girls about kind of age ranges and that sort of thing. Uh, yes, so she's 12, and she's always been um, an advanced reader, so she started reading really early and has always been willing to tackle um, difficult books, read Shakespeare, so and I think that really gave her this opportunity because there was a lot of reading involved. She's also a very motivated young lady <laughs> who wants to take on the world pretty early. Um, but I don't think that's everything. I think the material uh, was really well laid out. It was very structured, very well structured. Um, we knew what she needed to study every day, read this part of this book, do this review. You know, and so it was really laid out in a way that I think any child, I don't know, because I believe my 11-year-old could do it as well. I doubt that he will. It's not really his thing. <laughs> but um, if he was as motivated, he could do it. So I think um, it just, for, so my 12-year-old does, I didn't, I didn't think she was, I didn't think she was spectacularly gifted or a prodigy. We haven't really felt that, oh, wow, we have a, an Einstein in our home kind of a thing. But I do know that she has a lot of interesting things like this and reads on a really good level. So she's taking Algebra 1. So she was, I guess if I were to put her in a grade, even though she is in seventh grade in our home school, uh, maybe outside the home she might have been in an, on a ninth grade level in some areas. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we were. Okay, and so what you all have done is, <clears throat> I might have missed that, you all did Algebra 1 at home and got and got credit for it, is that correct? No, we did oh, uh, U.S. History 1. So I was trying to place my daughter, you know, grade level wise. Uh, she's in the middle of Algebra 1, but reads, you know, pretty t challenging books. Uh, so she did the very first subject in the dual, at home, dual credit at home program, which is U.S. History 1. And uh, it started out really hard. She was, it was very challenging for her at first to really get into that mode of thinking because everything else she'd done was just, oh, just read this book or read that book or your basic, read the history book, answer the questions at the end, memorize some stuff and, um, you know, take the test. This was more, it required more thinking from her to understand what was behind it. So that was, it was hard. I, would, I wouldn't say it was or just a high school class or just your seventh grade type history. It did require the student to think and to pay attention to what they were studying. Uh, she couldn't coast through it. Excellent. Oh, and then she, uh, let me, I can give you the results. She got a 72. Uh, passing score is 50 in that test for the CLEP. Um, I believe a perfect score is 80. So she got really close to a perfect score. Um, and so she has uh, one high school credit from that, I believe, and three college credits. And we have a, a college, actually, really close, a great college that was one of our choices for, you know, 
way down in the future that's come really close now um, that does accept those credits. So we're really excited that this is an amazing opportunity for her and hopefully for the rest of her siblings as well. Excellent. I want everybody to remind remind me in a minute, and I'll go back and talk about, or we'll talk about what what CLEP is, and kind of um, go through some of those acronyms for for the audience and for the listeners. Um, Kendra, I saw her nodding throughout throughout Shade's um, uh, explanation, um, and so maturity level wise, um, has your has your experience been a little bit different? Did your did your guys start out doing this early, or was it a little bit later in their in their high school? My oldest started when he was 15, and I wouldn't say he was quite as mature as Sade's um, daughter, but he's a guy, and so he uh, he's a bright kid, but I don't really think I have gifted students. Um, my second son took an AP course and went through the entire course and then didn't take the AP test <laughs> because I don't know why. Um, and then my third son is, you know, they're just kind of average students. They're not knockout academic kids. But um, we just saw this opportunity to, I mean, gosh, if you're going to take the class in high school, you might as well get the college credit for it and transfer it in somewhere. So um, we looked at courses for the 16-year-old that he is going to be taking as a high schooler, but then also repeats again in college. And we said, you know, what's the point of that if you're not going to gain the credit? So let's just do it once and, you know, apply ourselves and get those college credits. And that makes perfect sense. I'm going to call on Becky now. Is was that the was that the thought behind the dual credit program? Is that kind of how this came to be? Well, um, when our oldest was 15, he kind of a naive um, young man, I suppose. He told me he didn't want to get a four-year degree; he wanted a law degree. So when I told him you had to have the four-year degree first, he just said, "Well, how fast can I do it?" So that put me, and this was back in. Um, 2002. That just put me to doing the research to think, okay, is there a faster way? And um, he, that's the way we did it. He did his degree entirely by exam in 21 months for $3,100. And it was fully accredited. And he started law school when he was 17 at the University of Houston. So he graduated when he was 20. And um, has actually been an assistant DA in Harris County now for seven years. So my 20-something could retire in three years, he told me the other day. <laughs> um, because he's been with the county for that long. That's scary. You know, that will make you feel old. But um, he assured me he would not retire. But um, so that just got us started on it. And then when my other kids saw him do it that quickly, fully accredited, they just decided that's what I'm doing. Excellent. Will you share what? Where did he get his undergrad degree? Like what college? Sure. He graduated from Charter Oak State College, which is regionally accredited. It's in um, New Britain, Connecticut. We've never been to Connecticut, but um, you can watch the graduation live. And they—that's um, one school that will let you earn 114 of your 120 credits for your bachelor's by exam. And so three of my kids have graduated from Charter Oak. Uh, my third one is has just finished. She's 19. She just finished her second year at University of Texas Law School. I'm, I'm just amazed. I'm sitting here with my mouth open because <clears throat> I'm just amazed. Um, <laughs> it's just it says I, it's something that I guess you get out of the mindset. Like I never th I never knew that you could do anything like this. It's um. It's very new. Uh, we did AP when I was in high school, and that kind of helped you down the helped you down the road. But um, to that extent, I never knew that you, never knew that you could do a program, you know, like this. Um, so let me, because you, I'm glad that you mentioned um, time and and money. Uh, give me an idea, like tell me, like how does this save time and money? Me? Okay. Um, well, they can start it when they're 15, and, and we just let our kids replace high school with college. We didn't do high school and then do college, so we just layered them on top of each other, and that saved us a lot of time. Now, where we saved the money was we didn't have to pay for the, uh, like a full semester course. You can self-teach the subject at home, 
and go take the 90 minute test and have the same credits as if um, you had taken the class. So that saves a lot of money. Excellent. I want to throw up a comment that, that Kendra sent to me. Um, another option, she said, for, for a state co or college that will, that her, her kids graduated from Thomas Edison State College in New Jersey. That's another option. Um, let me hear from Adrian and, and Heidi. Adrian, is this the approach that you're going to plan to take with your son, um, not, repeating, not repeating the same course again, but just basically, okay, he's done this U.S. history now, he's gotten, he's gotten credit for it, and guess what, we're done with history now. Is that what you're going to do? Yes. <clears throat> when Becky mentioned that she plans on, or that she has in the past, um, just replaced high school with a lot of the college courses, she had mentioned that. That's going to be our plan um, with and our local state college allows him to go and take a placement exam. Um, he can take it now, but I'm kind of probably going to wait until more in the middle of the summer or um, at the beginning of the fall and maybe register for him to take some spring classes next year. Um, but this whole credit by exam um, is super intriguing. I had no idea that you could earn so many of your credits by exam until we did dual credit at home. Excellent. Um, Heidi, what's your plan, plan going to be? Um, our original plan, I guess, starting um, dual credit was early for us. We planned on starting next year and doing basically the same thing. And the dual credit program came along and was actually perfect for this year because we were studying U.S. history already. And, um, you know, I hadn't planned on starting till next year, but I was like, oh, we're already studying U.S. history. Why not? study and you know do US history and then take the exam and get the credit for it and um, so that was our was our plan was starting next year when my daughter would be a sophomore in high school would be basically to be studying a subject in high school and then to complete the year by taking the CLEP exam to get the college credit for it um, I'm not sure our local college accepts uh, CLEP credit but our daughter wants to go into the medical field and um, so things get a little bit tricky when it comes to the sciences and you know what they want you to accomplish. But um, our goal is to get as many of our CLEP exams taken and get as many of them as you know accepted as possible when she enters her degree program. Excellent. Um, you're hearing you're hearing us toss around a few terms that I'm going to actually ask Becky to define for us. Um, you've heard us mention AP. Um, that's the advanced placement. Um, CLEP is, um, I don't remember what CLEP stands for. And I'm seeing something in my notes called DSST. Mm -hmm. um, you want to break those down for us and kind of uh, just remind everybody kind of what they are and how that, how that helps with college placement or co college credit? Sure. And there are other ways to earn college credit besides exam. We just focused on the exam programs. And um, perhaps the most well-known one is CLEP, and that does stand for College Level Examination Program, and it is widely accepted. Um, but every school is going to set their, every college is going to set their own limits on which exams they will accept and how many credits. Because, um, to be honest, you know, the brick and mortar schools make their money when you're studying in the classroom. So they do set limits on it. Um, the DSST that you mentioned is another college level examination um, program that is uh, administered by the Department of Defense. They, a lot of military uh, service men and women earn credits by exam through DSST in the military. College, uh, CLEP is administered by College Board, the same company that does the SAT test. And then um, Thomas Edison that um, Kendra mentioned a while ago, Thomas Edison State College has an exam program. And Excelsior, um, the GRE is a graduate record exam. Um, some of those, the biology GRE is worth 24 college credits. Um, several, a couple of my kids took the GRE in literature and in one exam received 18 college credits. It's about a three hour test. So there are some different exam programs that are all accredited that you can use. CLEP is just the most common. Excellent. Thank you for that. Um, Marlene had a question that we were going to bring in from the event room. Yes. Um, 
Grace is asking, how much are these exams? You guys want to tackle that one? Some of, the, some of the, you all, you've had the students that have taken the test. How about Adrian? You want to you want to chime yeah. in there? Yeah, we paid to College Board to, to register for the CLEP. We paid, I thought it was 85, but Kendra had mentioned it was 80, so she might be right, 80 or 85. And then to our local state college, we had to pay 25 to actually take the exam, where he sat to take the exam. So for us, it was 105 altogether. Kendra, tell me what your what uh, your experience has been. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think some of these tests may be the the range may vary because of the subject. Like it may not be all this. It may not be all the same price for the, for different subjects. Am I correct on that? Boy, I don't know about that. Um, I know that the last few that I've seen come through on my credit card <laughs> were 85 or 80 dollars, and. Um, here, we're in California, and my sons take them at University of Phoenix. So if you have a University of Phoenix that's local to you somewhere, um, you know, it's usually a, a community college or a, a private little, you know, school like that that will administer the tests. And as far as I know, University of Phoenix doesn't have a fee, but I could be wrong about that. Um, and then you're looking at uh, some sort of testing material if you if your student needs to really bulk up on uh, studying for that test. Uh, so a book. Um, there's also uh, jumpcourse.com that offers really great uh, courses that can help you get through these tests. Um, we're very impressed with those. And so I think you're looking, when I priced it out the last time um, for a blog post, it was $80 for the CLEP fee and then about 180 to take like a jumpcourse.com or $99 to take a jumpcourse.com uh, class, or you're looking at, you know, like maybe a forty, fifty, sixty dollar book or books and materials. I am completely making this up, <laughs> but it's around that somewhere. And the thing is that my my uh, second son is going to be starting at um, a private university this year in nursing school. And I looked up his courses; they are six hundred and eighty-seven dollars and fifty cents per unit. When most courses are three units, so if you think about a testing materials and an $80 CLEP fee, you're looking at around $150, $180 for three credits through a, cre a CLEP test, as opposed to $687 per unit. So I mean, it's like the savings is it's just not even it's not even comparable. You're not even looking at apples to apples, you know. So if these are classes that your kids can test out of, why not? And and just transfer them in wherever they're going to go. I agree. As a as a nurse who went to a very small private school, um, not on my own dime, thankfully. Um, I remember book fees back then. I was I was appalled. It was it was horrible. <laughs> and and I and that was me going in with I, I went in with credit from AP courses in high school. I tested out of some um, English courses because of ACT scores. Uh, I took college. I had took college classes in the summertime, like at the community college in between. I mean, it was like I did. I did it all in a way that I that I could to kind of accelerate it and save money at the same time too, just not in this kind of program. But let me talk about dual credit a little bit more. Um, this is a and Becky can um, chime in and correct me if I mess anything up. Um, lesson plan. This helps it helps you as a parent to help teach. Um, lesson plans are emailed weekly for 49 weeks. So um, as Heidi alluded to earlier, she took a little bit of a slower approach. Am I correct on that, Heidi? Um, so you can do it a little bit slower if that if that's going to be the season of your life and you want to kind of take it down a little bit, a little bit more. Um, students can go through 13 core subjects earning high school credit. And then when they finish the subject, the subject, they can take the corresponding CLEP test or DSST test to earn the college credit. So, Becky, if you would um, take me through like um, a typical like, say I wanted to sign my child up for tell me tell me what core tell me what core subjects you have first and foremost. Okay. Um, and I chose the thirteen exams to fulfill both Thomas Edison and Charter Oaks general education requirements. So they're going to go through over the course of the forty nine weeks. Um, which most families stretch to about 65 weeks or longer, especially um, some of these younger kids, um, the 12, 13, 14, 
they, there's no need because they're also packing in music and debate or drama or sports and things like that. So um, over the period of time that they do the lesson plans, they're going to cover college mathematics, natural sciences, which is actually two high school years of science. Um, let me look at my cheat sheet. But um, Okay, so U.S. History 1 and 2. And social sciences and history, which is going to include their world history, natural sciences, um, humanities, introduction to world religions. And Kendra may say, wow, some of these kind of sound familiar. But um, college mathematics, American government, human and cultural geography. They're going to do college composition. They're actually going to go through introduction to public speaking, which is kind of creative because um, they find you know, avenues, they have to practice writing lots of speeches and they're going to deliver them at the dinner table mostly, but maybe 4-H, maybe youth group, um, some things like that. And the last one is called Ethics in America and it's a DSST test. And we saved that one for last um, just because of, um, you know, my kids never really had to study anything objectionable, but at the same time, um, I just like the idea of a student being a year older before going into that course, which is a great course to do at home and not in a classroom. Excellent. Well, take me through, like, if I had a daughter, uh, my oldest is 19, she's actually in college, but if, if someone were contemplating, um, okay, is this program going to work for me? What would you, and then I'd also like some of the girls to chime in here too, um, what would you suggest? Like, I'm hearing just from um, listening to some of the girls and their experience, um, like with Come Kendra, and so not every college accepts there's only there's a there's a limit on some of the um, hours accepted and then you also mentioned to Heidi that sometimes they're kind of picky about sciences and that sort of thing like if you were if you had a if you had a child that did not know what they wanted to do major wise in college walk me through like what how would this program benefit them like okay. what, what could you do at home Okay, and that is always my first question if I'm at a homeschool convention is does your child know what they want to do? My daughter graduates with a BS in nursing this December um, and her, the school she's attending had just a certain amount of CLEP or DSST credit by exam that they would allow her to bring in. So I didn't want to pay for exams we weren't going to transfer, but yet some of those subjects she studied then when she had to sit in the classroom the class was so much easier so she could focus on a different class but um, so if they know they have a school picked out they know what they want to do then you should go into it um, well aware of what that school is going to let you bring in now my um, 12 year old who is um, college board just changed their policy and now you have to be 13 to purchase a CLEP exam but um, my, my older son, I just heard him telling her, I really liked what he said, even if you change what you want to be, you're halfway there if you've already covered all your basics. I mean, my kids know they're going to do Charter Oak unless um, they're going to do engineering or nursing, and I have two kind of going that direction. So they go ahead and do this and get all their basics out of the way before they even narrow down exactly what they might want to do. Is there, gonna, oh. That's okay. I was just going to say, um, I, I didn't know if I answered your question fully. Absolutely. I'm going to pick on Kendra here for a second, too. Did you kind of have a plan in mind? Did you all have a plan in mind? Like, did, did, the, did the guys know what they were going to do, or was it just a way for them to kind of get things kind of in the process, get the ball rolling, per se? Yeah, well, what's funny is that um, when we started it, my son, who's now 21, was 15, he wanted to go to law school. So, Becky, that's exactly what his plan was at the time. And we sort of presented this idea to him. My, my husband and I had both gone to expensive private university um, and then him on to dental school, which was is like $350,000 a year. <laughs> that's why your dental work is so expensive. And... Um, you know, we're looking at eight children and a guy who wanted to go to law school and we were just looking at options and boy when I learned about CLEPS, because like you Diana, I had taken AP courses into college with me but when I saw this idea of testing I thought, oh my goodness, I could have saved my parents so much money 
<laughs> if I had only known. Um, and so my son, at the wise ripe age of 15, said, well, I could do this quicker, and I could do it way less expensively. And we said, yes, you got it. I mean, he really, he really understood that this was such a great um, option for him financially, wanting to go on to... Um, a doctorate or a master's program. Since then, he's changed course and um, is probably not real set in what he wants to do. But the funny thing is, my husband got his dental degree with a bachelor's of English. And so my son said, I'll just get a bachelor's of English because apparently you can pretty much do anything with that. <laughs> So that's what he's doing, and um, he's had some turn of events in his life in the last year that have caused him to really seek what God wants him to do next. Um, so that's how that has worked for him. Then I have the nursing student who's sort of on a clear course in traditional schooling, and then my 16-year-old has no idea what he wants to do. And I said, look, this is the time to store up some of those uh, just general ed units and let's do this quickly and cheaply because you can take those into any, you know, any direction you're going. I'm glad that you mentioned that because Adrienne's messaging me that her, her son's not, not really clear on, on what he wants to do. And you know what? And I want to mention that to everybody too. That's okay. That's normal. I mean, don't you think? I mean, I, I, knew, I knew I wanted to be a nurse when I was junior in high school, but it wasn't like I had some, you know, revelation. It was just that, okay, you're a woman. Well, you want to be a teacher or a nurse? Uh, I'm going to nursing school, and that's how it worked out. And that that really that really is my story. And it's not anything. It's ter that sounds so bad, but it's very easy for me. So to me, I'm like, well, that's kind of where I needed to be, apparently. But anywho, so it's okay. Don't don't stress out if your kid doesn't know what they want to do. That that's my that's my gist there. Um, let's talk about how some of these dual credit lesson plans work. Like, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on Heidi. Um, are you going right by the lesson plan, or are you uh, are you going off on your own tangent? Tell me kind of how this is working in your home, especially because you're. And then I'm gonna segue into the next section because your daughter's very busy. I know. Yeah, for us, I think it's probably working a little differently than like Sade, who was able to already take her exam um, for multiple reasons. Um, one, we live in New York State, and we have to have a certain number of hours per subject. And dual credit is set up as such that you're doing you're doing fi approximately five hours a day of work. And now, while we haven't worked through all 49 weeks, obviously, um, the ones we're doing right now, you're doing two subjects concurrently. So we're doing United States History one, and we're doing a literature um, one simultaneously. So you're spending, um, you know, you would be spending five hours a day on those two subjects for uh, five weeks. Um, like, you know, the, then U.S. history finishes and, you you know, something else comes in. Um, so for us, um, we have to log a certain number of hours per subject. So we have to be careful about that. So my daughter is also doing, I mean, she's still working through her own math program. Um, she's still working through electives, um, whether that be photography, computer programming. Um, what else is she doing? Um, we're doing like a, an um, art of argument. So, and she also spends three and a half to four and a half hours a day um, at the gym because she's a competitive gymnast. So for us, it has really worked out more that what is one week of the dual credit program, we've kind of stretched over two. So we follow the plans, you know, we, we, get, we work our way through each thing, but we've stretched it over two weeks so that we can include the time for her to do the other subjects that we need to log for New York State and the time for her to be able to be at the gym, which is, you know, part of the reason why she is at home um, because she spends so much time at the gym. So, yes, we follow the plans. Um, we are loving Speedy Prep, which is part of you. you um, Speedy Prep is a separate um, online website that Dual Credit has you using. Um, and that runs through a lot, a lot of practice, practice problems, questions. Um, and um, that's a, a primary way of studying. And so we are following the lesson plans for Dual Credit. We are just taking longer to do it. Um, because we can't we can't spend five hours a day just on that, like I said, both because of her schedule and because New York State requires a certain number of hours to be logged per, an, you know, a field of subjects. Perfect, um, Adrian. How about chime in there and let me know? Let me tell everybody how how you guys are working through it. Yeah, I have to say the lesson plans it made 
it, they were really easy. I essentially did nothing but hit print and helped my son organize the binder that um, Becky sent us with our materials. Um, it, it just made it very simple for him to understand what to do, when to do it. Uh, like Sade was saying, it just specifically says, read this in this book, read that in that book, and they're able to check it off each time they complete a task. Um, it was just laid out very clean and easy for him to use, which says a lot for him because he can get overwhelmed um, when there's a lot of information. And there was a lot of information to learn and review, so having the lesson plans be so organized and simple to use was really really important and I think it really helped him succeed in the program. It took him about nine weeks. Um, he started, I wish I had written down the date that Becky sent that, you know, our first week of study because I think it took him about nine weeks to do the five weeks prep for the history exam that he took. So it's easy to go at your own pace. Excellent. I want to make sure that everybody that everybody hears that. that it's not like you you don't have to adhere exactly to the schedule. You can kind of stretch it out as as your students need. Um, Marlene has a question from the event room for us. Yes, um, Grace is asking if all schools, colleges, um, if they all accept general education class exams. Becky, you want to chime in on that one? I know what my answer is, but you have more experience with this. Well, some schools will accept, say, the English composition exam, while the next school won't accept that one, but they will take something else. So not every school is going to accept every exam, but they will make it real clear on their website. You can just um, search the name of a school that you're considering along with perhaps the words credit by exam policy or CLEP policy, and you can find out really quick what they'll take. Excellent. Thanks for chiming in with that one. Um, let me talk to Kendra and Sade. I want to hear about like how do you because while we we said that this is this is a you can you can bring this program out a little bit longer if you need to, but it's it even that this is still pretty intensive. I mean, you know, you're you're getting you're getting credit for things you know at home while you're trying to balance everything out. Um, my boys are in sports. Um, I have a daughter that rides. Like, how do you balance all of that stuff, like their passions, their interests, with this program? So, like, how how did you manage to to juggle to juggle all of that to earn college credit while you're still home while you're still doing high school? Um, I can chime in on that. Um, we didn't balance it, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, we she dropped everything to do this. Um, so. We still made time for family, so none of, the fel none of her family responsibilities were allowed to fall by the wayside. She had to help with the baby, dishes, cooking, you know, all of that stuff was still there. Um, she still got to do her extracurricular activity. She does drama and martial arts. So all of those things just stayed in place, but then schoolwork, what happened was the school day changed, and she did U.S. history from 9 a.m. till 1.30 pretty much. And so she did nothing else. Oh, she would look at her math a little bit and she loves to read so she would read for fun. But overall this was school for um, for a good eight weeks. Um, so that's just kind of how we do things. We're kind of an all or none family. We're not very good. I know Heidi is awesome at scheduling. <laughs> I, uh, I don't do that so well. So we just threw ourselves into it and said, hey, let's do this. This is great and um, everything else can wait and we'll just get back to everything else whenever <laughs> whenever we're done and so that's what um, that's what we did. Awesome. Now see I think Kendra's a little bit more laid back but I might be I might be wrong. Uh, did, did it look the same in your house? Did you guys kind of drop everything and, and get focused or did it just kind of build itself in? What do you think? Oh, I don't know how to answer that, except that I think we are really actually a pretty scheduled um, group because there's just so many of us and I have a special needs son and, you know, all of those things. So in order to, to do life, there's a routine. And I probably would say that by the time my oldest was ready to do this, he understood the need for creating his own sort of routine or schedule. It's pretty self-disciplined. So, um, and that, oh, he's laughing. He's, he's right here. He's laughing that he's self-disciplined, but... I would say otherwise. Anyways, he um, he he was on his own. But I, if I look back, I think uh, that first test he took was analyzing and interpreting li literature, and that's a CLEP test. Um, and 
I'm I would be willing to bet six years ago now, but I would be willing to bet we we dropped his other English stuff at the time, and that's all he studied for. I mean, there's really no reason not to do that for an amount of time. Um, my 16 year old is taking psychology this summer, and that's like a summer school course for him. So just over the summer, that's what he'll do. Um, and again, different kid. He's not super motivated, and I'll probably have to cattle prod him a little bit. But you know, if I stuck it in the summer, it wasn't too distracting other than a summer job. So, um, you know, you'll find ways to make it fit in. Or it's, I think it's pretty obvious when you can say, okay, you're taking the college math exam. Let's not do math right now. You know. Perfect. And I'm glad that you mentioned motivation again, Becky. I want to ask you actually. Because um, I've heard motivation and uh, self-driven and and things come up here in the panel, are there are there families or students that this that this program would not work for? Okay, because I'm going to give you for an an example. Um, I had a girlfriend whose um, child is in public school, and she's come, she's emailed me and said, "Can I watch this hangout? Um, I want to know about more about this because she's thinking." Potentially, could she use this for her kid that's in that's in traditional school? So, um, t kind of handle both both of those if you don't mind. Um, you know, what who who wouldn't this be a good fit for? And is this only for homeschooler homeschooling families? Okay, um, I don't think it would be a really good fit for a child that was not motivated at all unless the parent was going to be there to be the accountability you know if um, you know if for some reason parents aren't going to watch and check up on it then um, I would find some type of program where it was a um, just a constant um, there is somebody watching because it's school needs to be happening so um, but at the same time they do get a binder that is really organized. So even if a child is not structured or not organized, they're going to be forced to be by the notebook that they have to keep. Um, and as far as for public school, I've had people ask me that. Um, I don't think it's being used by anyone other than homeschoolers right now, but I don't know all the students, their personal situations. Um, it would definitely work for them, but if you can imagine attending school all day, and then having a four or five hour um, study day to do this. But there are a lot of dual credit home students who only do one subject at a time. Um, the lesson plans are written to conquer two at a time, but some kids, they only have two and a half hours a day because of other subjects or um, like the New York requirements. So they do one subject, come to the end of it, take the official exam, go back, do the second subject. Excellent. Thanks for clearing that up. I appreciate it. Um, Marlene's got a question for me from the event room, I think. I sure do. Um, Rose is asking if this program can be mostly taken by just the student alone, or does the mother homeschool teacher have to supervise a lot during the study part of the exams? Can I tackle that one? <laughs> um, can you hear me? I, um, I would say that that goes back to the, t the topic of motivation. Um, you know, and it does require a lot of um, of kind of study time, of taking notes, um, which I do like, by the way. All I think all students need to learn to take good notes, um, and that's a point that I would love to make about this program is that it really does, it does, you know, force them to take notes. And my daughter would go back and add things to her notes when um, she, you know, she would be working through the study prep and realize man, did I just miss that entire, you know, whatever it was, and she'd go back and add things to her notes. Um, I do think that um, it require, doesn't require a mom to, you know, to be reading and being right on top of them, but I do think that even my daughter, who's fairly um, self-motivated and good about it, still needs me to be looking in and going, okay, where are you at? You know, what have you accomplished? Um, you know, how are you feeling about this? So it definitely isn't something where, like, you don't have to, you don't have to be there. You can the, the lesson plans are very clear from dual credit what you're supposed to do each day. So they can sit there and do them as long as they're motivated to do them. And for me it was just a matter of I'd just pop in and 
take a look at my daughter's notes, how's your note taking going, talk about maybe the techniques of taking notes and kind of look in on what she's doing, check speedy prep to see, you know, how successful, you know, how successful she's, you know, doing on taking the practices there. Um, so absolutely, I think you can 100% your student, you can leave them with the lesson plans and have them do it, but I think it's really important to, to check up on them and uh, see how they're doing. Thanks, Heidi. Um, Becky, I think you had something to chime in there as well. Um, there are lots of um, single moms who um, use these study plans there at work during the day, and you know, one or two kids. One I'm thinking particularly, the daughter's just um, an only child. She's home. She's doing uh, lesson plans and following it real close. Um, that's perhaps the number one thing I hear mom say is good. It's done for me. My child has Monday through Friday. The assignments are written out because, you know, by the time we have high schoolers, we either are starting to have aging parents that, or grandchildren maybe, not me, but um, so we have other things drawing our attention away or it's our first child who's reached high school and we're still teaching junior high or elementary. And so it's just a real relief to have a study plan something we can hand our high school kids. Thank you, Becky. Um, Marlene has one more question, I think, from the event room, and we'll answer that from our panelists. Marlene? Um, yeah, I think this is just more of a, uh, a comment. Um, huh. Okay, so Leah is saying that here in New York City, um, their children can do dual, can dual enroll in the community college for the price of their books. That's the option they're considering since they also have online courses that they could take without having to be in the classroom with college age students. I can chime in on that. Here in Florida, we have something similar. Thank you, Adrian. Um, so I'm, I'm going back through my notes and kind of watching the girls on the panel too and listening. Um, so I think um, we've kind of covered all the topics that I had in my notes and then I think we've answered most of the questions over in the event room. Um, just to kind of recap, um, Becky is here representing dual credit, dual credit at home um, where three of her kids have earned their college accredited degrees um, in various fields, which I was super impressed about, um, following her study plans. So um, if you head over to the event page, I believe Marlene has put a link there for a free ebook that's being offered by Dual Credit at Home. And that will explain how this program worked in her family and Becky's family, and then how you can instant implement implement that in your own and then I believe there's a discount code there as well am I correct or is that correct Becky the discount code is that just for is it was that just for I have a discount code here um, in my notes as well we can put that out there the IHN IHN that's pretty simple to remember so just stick that in there. There's no expiration date on there. So if you're watching this and it's been it's been a couple of weeks, then you should be able to, you should be good to go. So I want to thank everybody once again so much for being here with me today. Um, I have I have lots of notes that I'm taking on my own over here uh, for future reference when some of my kids get a little bit older. Um, and I'm thrilled as always to learn from these wonderful ladies that I work with every day. So, um, once again, I will introduce everybody. Um, Adrian is from themommymess.com. Thanks, Adrian. Becky Muldrow is here representing dualcreditathome.com. Thank you, Becky. Loved it. My friend Heidi is at starts at 8.com. Kendra Fletcher is at homeschoolingirl.com. And don't forget to check out her podcast as well. My friend Marlene Griffith is at diligenthot.com. Shade Tagbo is at shadetagbo.com and me, I'm Diana Kennedy and I'm at thekennedyadventures.com. You can join us here each and every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, noon Mountain Time and 11 a.m. on the Pacific Coast. Follow us on YouTube 
And also you can subscribe to us via iTunes or Stitcher and take us on the go. It'll be in podcast form. And make sure that you circle all these girls over on Google+. Plus. They will be sharing some great content. Thank you so much for your time today. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.